Previously, we looked at Mario's secret appearances on the NES. Now it's time to jump to my personal favorite console of all time, the Game Boy. Yes, Mario snuck into quite a few games on the Game Boy, even more than the Nintendo Entertainment System. Some of these games you would have no idea he was in, but hey, that's what I'm here for. Before we begin, I'll recap the rules. First, we are only looking at Game Boy games released in North America. Second, the game can't have Mario's name in the title. Sorry, Mario's Pycross. And finally, once again, I won't be including Donkey Kong games. It's too obvious, and I'd like to show off the lesser-known games. Alright, let's get started. First, we have Golf. There's Mario on the cover, and you play as him hitting the links. Yes, everyone yells fight right before a round of Golf. When we looked at Golf on the NES, I learned the character you played as was not actually Mario. However, the Game Boy version is definitely Mario. The cover is a dead giveaway, and the character sprite is pretty spot on. Next, we have Alleyway, a breakout style game. This cameo came as a bit of a surprise to me. Apparently the little paddle you control is actually a spaceship piloted by Mario. When you begin the game, Mario jumps in to take control. Also, if you look closely on the cover, you'll see him inside the ship. Moving on, let's take a look at Baseball. This cameo is a little tricky. By the cover, we can clearly tell Mario is pitching, and when you choose the Bears team, you can choose Mario as your pitcher. However, every character pretty much looks exactly the same in this game. So is this Mario? Well, the name fits, and the cover says yes, so I'm gonna count it. Next up, we've got Tennis. There's Mario hidden in the corner of the cover. Mario made his first appearance in a sports game with Tennis on the NES, and he has taken his officiating talents to the Game Boy. He looks much more like himself in this version, and tracks the ball around the court. Once again, he makes all the rulings. As a side note, Tennis on the Game Boy is a much better version than the one on the NES, so I recommend checking it out. Let's move on to another NES port, Yoshi! Mario once again is responsible for flipping the tiles on the bottom while you match characters and try to form Yoshi eggs. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of this game. I feel like the best thing about it is the commercial. Speaking of Yoshi, here's Yoshi's Cookie. It's extremely similar to the NES version, except Yoshi is helping Mario this time with the levers. I do kind of miss Mario in full chef gear. Other than that, it's a pretty faithful port of the NES game. Alright, now let's take a look at Kicks. And yes, it is pronounced that way. Even the poster says so. This Mario cameo kind of surprised me. Kicks was originally an arcade game from Taito that was ported over to the Game Boy. The objective is to grid off space on this board while avoiding these sparks and the dreaded Kicks. This jumbled object is unpredictable and you can't let it touch your lines while you draw them. Now you're probably wondering, how in the world is Mario in this game at all? It seems so random, and it was made by Taito. Nintendo actually ported this game to the Game Boy, so Mario appears in cutscenes after you get a game over. Depending on your score, you'll see different scenes featuring Mario, which take place in a variety of countries around the world. For some reason, Nintendo chose to depict Mario in the most stereotypical way possible for each country, and some of these were a little uncomfortable to see. I was only good enough to see the first cutscene, but there are a few more featuring Africa, India, China, and England. Come on, Nintendo. You're better than this. Next up, we got F1 Race. It's a pretty standard racing game, very similar to Pole Position. Did you know this game supported up to four players? The game actually came with a four-player adapter. Anyway, after you win the Canada race, Mario is there to congratulate you at the finish line. Yep, that's it. Thanks, Mario. Let's move on to Tetris. Mario was in the NES version, so it only makes sense he would move to the Game Boy as well. However, this appearance is a little different. You can only see Mario when you play the game via link cable. Each player is represented by either Mario or Luigi. It's a little difficult to see, but there he is. Whoa, Luigi, what's, what's going on with you? I can't, I can't look away. I can't. Finally, we have the Game & Watch Gallery games. Since the games are all pretty similar, I'm going to cover all three at once. Game & Watch Gallery contained a variety of classic Game & Watch titles, allowing you to play the original version or an updated version using modern Nintendo characters. This is where Mario comes in. He shows up everywhere in these games. So let's take a look at a few.
Well, that about does it for Mario's secret appearances on the Game Boy. Do you have a suggestion for a character and system I can use for the next Secret Games episode? Let me know in the comments. That's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching.